The Legend of Zelda. Zelda is one of Nintendo's most successful franchises. Each of the games generally sells millions of copies, so it's no surprise that the game has garnered such a huge following of dedicated fans. And of course, with the following of that size, people will inevitably try to profit off of the name. And some of those things might not be affiliated with Nintendo at all. So, I present to you the thing that you probably never wanted or even asked for even a little bit. The Magnificent! The Majestic! Is Zelda bootleg? First up, we have this one called Zelda Sanshen Jili, also known as the Triforce of God. Think of it as more of an 8-bit remake or a demake of A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. It was apparently made by the Chinese pirate company Weijing Science and Technology back in 2005. Oh man! Step aside, Koji Kondo! There's a new player in town, and his name is... Uh, Weijing Computer... I don't know about you, but this music really screams to the heavens! Zelda! So I guess this is supposed to be the backstory, but I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to read any of it if the text is flying all over the frickin' place! I can realistically only guess that it's retelling the original story from A Link to the Past. There's gonna be a decent amount of me guessing considering most of these bootleg games come from China. Oh, you feel that? That's excitement. That's excitement for what's to come. We can only guess what treasure troves of madness await us on our journey. Alright, let's start a new game. Well, as far as I can tell for now, it seems to be pretty close to the original. Oh, there goes the uncle, he's trying to escape the game already. He's like, he's like, I'm out. Look, look at his little waddly ass legs. You know, if I had half a mind, I think I'd just stay in bed. You just know Link's thinking about it. So we take control of Link, and I assume what we're supposed to do is go to the castle. It looks like some of the mechanics are still in place from A Link to the Past. I can actually pick up stuff, which is a good sign. Uh-oh, trouble guys! His no-frame animation is coming to get us! Got him. Oh, actually, it does look like they have a walking animation, but it only triggers sometimes. These guys actually act more akin to zombies with sonar tracking you. <laughs> I'm, st I'm stuck! This is good. It's a good game. Uh, um, um, uh, Gom over? Gom over. Well then, Gom over to you too. <gasps> hey! As far as I can tell, this game actually tries to stay pretty true to the original Link to the Past. Now, not even being able to read the text, I'm not sure if it's actually pointing you in the right direction. I got through a good chunk of this game just on intuition alone from playing the original. Which, spoiler alert, if you haven't played the originals, you probably won't be able to get through these games. Okay, it's time to save Zelda. Go to the castle, sneak into the obvious and now open hole, talk to the uncle and get the sword. Uh... This how sword work? <laughs> when you attack someone with your sword, you just get locked into this animation where the enemy reacts to getting hit. Last I checked, this was in drama class. We're not putting on a rendition of Hamlet starring the sword guy from Zelda with backup from Jellyfish. Just, just let me attack him! At least the first dungeon seems to be intact for the most part, but nearly every dungeon in the game is shortened for some reason. Like the second temple amounts to essentially going to two different rooms and then you're at the boss. If you know where to go right away, it could take you less than a few minutes. Well, that is if you can figure out the cryptic way of getting into the dungeon, which let's be honest, you would have to have played the original to understand this. But what you're supposed to do is go up to this bookshelf and this bookshelf only and press the A button. Then you get the book that allows you to get into the dungeon. How you're supposed to know this at all, I have no idea. One of my favorite things about this bootleg is the way that some of the NPCs act or glitch. Uh, hey Zelda, could you get off my head please? Hey, what are you looking at? Stop that! I said stop it! Ah, so the A button, now that's your action button, you know, for talking to people, but the B button, now that's for your high-pitched frequencies. Speaking of the sound effects, they actually just don't trigger a lot of the time. Some of the sound effects only work on the overworld, and then when I go into a dungeon, there's nothing but the music. It's kind of weird. Oh, and since we're talking about the music, it's probably best that I mention that it's not a good...
Next up, we apparently have a Link's Awakening bootleg called Zelda Fenying Dao. Oh my god, what's going on here? Link, your face is missing. Call all the healers! Call the potion man! Get the fairies! Get Impa! Impa, save me! Well, I mean, you gotta admit that if you've gone through the same stuff that Link has, you'd probably have that face too. The face of a true hero. Now, this may be a Link's Awakening bootleg, but the resemblance aside from the title screen and the music... Uh, you could have fooled me. The game begins with Link's corpse washing ashore! Let's play the video game! Ah, jeez! As you can see, all those years of adventuring have not gone well for our fair hero. He looks as soulless as the intro screen. But hey, I guess we should praise that consistency. Well, aside from the blue. So this one seems to have a lot more of a story, and I know that because it takes frickin' forever to get past all the dialogue. I can't read you, I don't care. Okay, it looks like we can finally go explore now. Well, Link seems to be walking as slow as a turtle. I mean, I can't, I can't even explain how slow and stiff this feels. It's, it's worse than that. It's, a, it's like if Link the turtle had a pet snail and he was w walking down the sidewalk at a leisurely pace. Speed it up, man. My favorite part has to be when you accidentally move the screen in the wrong place, so it throws you back into the screen you just came from. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be doing. What do I do? I'm actually serious, where where do I go? I literally I literally can't figure this out and I've already gone around and talked to everyone. You can walk over bushes. You can walk over bushes. But holy crap, Jesus! How, how are you even supposed to fight this stuff? It all walks five times faster than you. Oh great, great, I'm surrounded by snakes. And game over. What are you looking at, Link? I see what are you looking at? I don't even know how you're supposed to make progress in this game without tiptoeing around with the most delicate touch. Each hit takes away an entire heart from you and you can take back-to-back -back damage in less than a second. Just look at this, how, how is this even fair? Dead, 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 snakes got to me, dead. Mummies, freaking, freaking mummies. Just look at how fast they run around. I thought you guys were undead. Here, zip around. How are you supposed to fight this stuff, what is this? I really like how in some of these games so far, some of the enemies can move diagonally, but you can't! It's great! There's honestly not much more I can even say about this one, because I can't even get that far. The next bootleg is Zelda Shenchi Mao Z, or the Minish Cap for the NES. Can't you tell, guys? This is definitely the Minish Cap! Definitely the Minish Cap! So the game starts with some peaceful music, and I'm assuming that this is supposed to be Zelda here. Ah, uh, what a fun and glorious day it is to be Zelda! Oh! Oh man! Zelda, go! Jeez, talk about your tonal shifts! Here on the Minish Cap NES, we go from 0 to 100, with no in-between! So Zelda talks to this old guy for a little bit, and then Link comes along. And then we talk for a little bit longer. We gotta have that talk, and... Gotta talk, gotta talk. You know, now that I think about it, is this a Pokemon song? Is this Pokemon? As far as I can tell, this game actually mimics the original Minish Cap game pretty well. There seems to be a festival and a sword ceremony where the bulk of the initial plot takes place. There really isn't much going on, you just kinda keep following Zelda until you get to the end of this really long road. But hey, at least I have some good tunes to listen to! This song, it gives Link purpose, fight with purpose, walk with purpose, Link! Oh no! Zelda, you're blue now. You have turned blue. So now, our Link must set out on his epic journey to save Zelda. He will fight many adversaries. He will walk to the beat of that weird music and solve puzzles that are literally not even really puzzles. Like literally, even a two-year-old could solve this puzzle. Also, this game's a turn-based RPG. W what? Yeah, for some weird reason, you know that gameplay feature that makes Zelda games a Zelda game? That's gone. In its place, we have this more traditional JRPG combat system. So now when we run into an enemy, it's not all action-packed like in the original Zelda or A Link to the Past. Instead, it's really slow like, oh, okay, okay, go click that. Now click the enemy. All right, now do, do it again. Now do that like 800 times. I mean, just look how long it takes to get through a battle with just one enemy.
I'm dead inside. So on top of not knowing where to go or what to do, the enemies also scale to your level so no matter where you go, they end up being stronger. Which leads to a lot of wandering around, not knowing what to do, running into lots of enemies, leveling up, and actually getting stuck. Why would you turn an action RPG like Zelda into a turn-based RPG? It, it doesn't make any sense! They're not the same! Okay, I think that's enough of the Chinese bootlegs for now. There's another one based on the Phantom Hourglass, but aside from the title screen being different, it's exactly the same game. I mean, really though, did you expect anything else? It's a bootleg from China. There is one more bootleg I found that was part of some sort of compilation pack. It came from something called a Jungle Tech 16 in 1, and the game is called Heroes Legend. The game appears to have some sort of bootleg Link asset. All you really do is go around and hammer things, and the game is set up like an old arcade game. There really isn't a whole lot to say about this one, it's just kind of strange. That may be the majority of the actual bootleg games that exist for Zelda, but that doesn't mean we're done. Nope. We still got hacks. ROM hacks to be more specific. You know, games that have been made by fans that utilize the original shell and mechanics of the game. Now this could be an entire video on its own, and I might delve more into this later on. But for now, Link is a ginger. That's the entire hack. That's it. Or how about a hack that apparently turns your character into Bruce Campbell? Let me repeat that. Bruce Campbell! You know the guy from the Evil Dead movies? This hack is actually pretty ridiculous. I couldn't even figure out what the creator wanted me to do most of the time. It turns out that he hints that he wants you to use ROM save states before taking pretty much any risk in the entire game. Also, it's pretty much mandatory that you know how to avoid taking damage because you'll have to bomb yourself to get over certain ledges. It's really easy to get stuck, and if you fall down a random hole and forgot to use a save state, sometimes the game will just glitch out. Cool. I can't, I can't even believe it. Right now I'm playing a ROM hack of A Link to the Past. I'm apparently the cult classic actor of the Evil Dead series, Bruce Campbell. This one is called Ocarina of Time 2D, and it's essentially an in-progress remake of Ocarina of Time that hopes to recapture the same feel with some added parody elements, but in a 2D Link to the Past style. Since the game is still in creation, it doesn't actually seem all that bad. There's even a cool unique mechanic that sometimes allows you to switch the screen style from an overhead perspective to a side-scrolling perspective, and attempts to incorporate that into the game design and puzzles. Forest folks shall not leave these woods. Violators will be shot, survivors will be shot again. I didn't realize the Kokiri were this strict about leaving the forest. Nobody leaves the forest! It seems like you can go as far as the first bus, but then the events that let you continue past this point don't seem to trigger, or at least in the version that I have. There are more recent updated versions of this mod, and according to the site, it's around 15% complete. Though when trying to download the latest version, it appears that Nintendo has potentially shut them down. For now, the site is still up though, and it seems like future updates will be released at some point, so this might be one to keep an eye out for. Next up, we have a ROM hack that's deemed by many to be the crowning jewel of A Link to the Past ROM hacks, called Parallel Worlds. This has to be one of the most fleshed out ROM hacks I've ever seen. Almost every little thing has changed, a complete redesign of A Link to the Past with totally different sprites, geographical layout, and story. This game is ridiculously hard though, you definitely had to have mastered the mechanics of A Link to the Past to even stand a chance. I'm not sure why this is a common thing in Zelda mods, but there always seems to be an extended section at the beginning of the game where you don't have your sword. In this game, you have to traverse nearly an entire dungeon without your sword, so the smallest error will lead to instant death. That is if you can even find your way to the first dungeon. Almost like a true-to-heart old-fashioned Zelda game, this game is filled with... How was I supposed to know that? Moments that you're gonna have to get past. There's tons of backtracking in situations that will certainly test your patience. I mean, just look at this boss room that I'm facing off against. Not to mention, this was the room right before I faced off against the boss where you have to fight another boss, and then this guy over here with his, with his dang pew-pew bullets are shooting at you the entire time you're trying to fight! There doesn't even seem to be a pattern. Sometimes he just decides he wants to shoot three or five bullets at you rapid fire. How am I supposed to do this with my five hearts? Or how about this mini boss here? After traversing this dungeon for hours trying to figure out what to do or what I was missing, I have to fight this boss. But it literally takes ages because of how much health they have. Then not just one room later, the actual boss appears. Oh, and by the way, if you mess up, it's over. You gotta do it all again. Chop smart, chop S smart. Mm -hmm. Definitely a rewarding but insanely frustrating experience. Only play this one if you want to test your Link to the Past skills. 
That's definitely not all of the Link to the Past ROM hacks by any means, but I still want to take this chance to take a look at a few ROM hacks for Ocarina of Time. How about a Minecraft hack that makes everything look like Minecraft? Okay. Or this one made by another YouTuber, Kraken, where everyone's face becomes Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. There's also a hack where you can play as Waluigi. Why you would want to do that, I'm, I'm not really sure, but it is pretty awesome. There's actually quite a few mods like this, where a lot of the game remains the same, they just change some of the textures. There are some hacks out there that try to change everything, including the story. One of the most popular and well-known hacks like this is called Zelda's Birthday. It takes the hub world of Ocarina of Time, but tries to tell its own story. That being that it's, uh, well, it's Zelda's birthday. What do you want from me? This isn't exactly science. These ROM hacks aren't exactly stable, though, sometimes. Link, get out of bed, Link! Link, bed! You can do it, you just gotta believe. One of the strangest things, at least to me, is that you start off in Link's original house, but it's in Kakariko Village. Oh no, Zelda's presents are missing? And we have to get them? Well, there you go, that's the story. This mod is filled with a lot of interesting design choices. It has another one of those swordless beginning segments where you're left without a sword for quite a while. It also makes the assumption that you've mastered Ocarina of Time's mechanics and secrets. When you get to the Gokiri Forest, you'll notice one big change. Trees! There's a lot of them. There's at least like five times as many. You can still go to the Lost Woods, in fact that's where you're supposed to go. In order to get a sword, you have to traverse through the Lost Woods, which is easy if you've done it before. But then you get to the Temple Pathway, and there's a variety of enemies that you have to avoid until you get to a chest with the sword. And until you get this thing, you literally can't defend yourself from the enemies you've seen thus far. Which includes Deku Babas, Tektites, and even Lizalfos. Yes, there are Lizalfos running around Hyrule Field. The first dungeon is also in the Lost Woods, replacing one of the warps that you would take to the Gorons. It's a little... <laughs> underwhelming. Most of the rooms are like this and offer up some sort of puzzle or combat scenario. Do you like it? Do you like being in the white room of the Matrix? The game also throws ridiculous enemies at you like Iron Knuckles. Need I remind you that this is the first dungeon of the game and I don't even have a shield. Oh great, two of them. In this room, you have to use the iron knuckle to break these pillars or you can't progress. Oh yeah, not to mention that if you get hit by one of these guys, you're instantly dead because you only have three to four hearts. There's also a lot of really tedious block puzzles. I was stuck on this one for about 30 minutes until I remembered some of the older mechanics from the game and eventually got myself to the Switch. You know, if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that these creators seem like they want to make the hardest games possible. Maybe it's unintentional, but I'm not really sure how most people are supposed to figure these games out. Now that I think about it, most of these games seem to cater to the hardcore audience, so they're kind of hard to recommend. What we need is something familiar to end on. Familiar, but unpredictable. <laughs> Never mind. This episode was sponsored by the awesome guys over at Crunchyroll.com. Crunchyroll is a premium streaming service for all you anime lovers out there. It gives you unlimited access to anime, manga, and drama titles, and the newest episodes appear as soon as one hour after they air in Japan. And the best part is, it's all ad-free in HD 1080p. So if you want to watch some stuff like Naruto, One Piece, Digimon, or Robot Girl Z, it's got Robot Girls! It's gotta be good! Using the link below crunchyroll.com slash spacehamster, you can get a free 30-day trial to Crunchyroll Premium. Links will be in the description down below, so definitely check it out. Again, thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you again to Crunchyroll for sponsoring the video. Definitely check out the link below if you love anime and you want to support this channel. You can also follow me on my socials. I got a Twitter, a Tumblr, a Facebook. Links are all in the description down below. And if you just can't wait for more videos, I got two more videos for you right there. Sonic Bootleg Games and Bootleg Mario Games on the Sega Genesis. That's it for me this time, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave me some comments if you want to see more videos like these or any topics of bootleg discussion that you want covered in the future. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.